Hi everyone, Carol here from Oak House Journals and um, this is part three of the little needle cases that I've been making and this is where we've got to so far. So following on from yesterday, um, what I did was I went away and I stitched my felt inner layer to the cover that I had created for each of my little pin cases. Um, as you can see, I still haven't stitched the pocket. Um, and the reason is that um, this is the time when we go on from here to add the cord that is going to be your closure and also the button. So that's where we got to on that one. Now on the original little case, let me show you, the button and the cord is on the pocket side. Now you don't have to do that on the ones that I've done. I've done that on a couple of cases um, but you can equally put the button on the opposite side and let me show you the differences. It's just really whatever your preference is really. So on this one, on the purple one where I pieced all the tiny little fabric pieces together, um, I've actually put the cord and the button on the pocket side. And on these, this one, again, this is the pocket side and this is where the cord comes out, but I've actually put the button on the opposite side. Now, the only thing that I would say, if you do that, then you need to make sure when you stitch your button on that you don't go through on into the inside of your needle case um, onto the felt. You can do that by all means if you don't mind si seeing the stitching from where you stitch your button on. Um, on this occasion I've just stitched it through the front cover and not through my felt which is now as you can see stitched on to my um, front cover. Um, I would say that's not a problem these aren't going to get a lot of wear and tear um, but if you think it might get a lot of wear and tear then um, perhaps you might not want to want to do that and these on all of these three cases these are just buttons that I happen to have in my stash that match perfectly so it was a it was a sheer fluke um, this one let me show you this one I've actually stitched to the pocket side and I think I've done the same on this one let me just show you. No, I actually did it on the cover side of this one, um, not on the pocket side. Okay, so now what we're ready to do is we're now ready to add our cord and stitch our buttons on. So, as I say, with the buttons you can stitch them where you like, on the pocket side or the other side. Okay. With regards to the cords, let me show you. All I did with those was I made a knot at the end of my cord and threaded it through the crease where my pocket is going to be stitched. And you could use whatever you like to make your cord. What I um, used for my cords were a couple of things. First off I used this orange uh, DMC thread. Um, it's number 720 if anybody's interested. Um, and I used four of the six threads from the skein to make my cord. And I just did some rough, really rough whipping by hand of my cord. I'm not sure if I can my camera is absolutely useless and I can't get it to focus very well. So if I come down a bit, you can see it's got quite a, um, a rough finish to it. I quite like that organic finish. And on this one, all I've done is not the end. And I'll explain why in just a moment in when we cover how to finish off the ends of our cords. 
on this one um, I actually plaited my cord. I used all six of the DMC threads out of the skein, divided it up into three, two of the threads each, and then I just plaited it and it gives a lot smoother finish to your cord. And at the end I just created a knot and made a little tassel. And that's all I'm going to do to this one. Um, I actually stitched my buttons on with some of the same um, orange DMC thread because I, I thought it was such a good match. I really liked it. So I'm not going to do anything, um, anything further with this one other than to do another row of stitching to stitch um, my pocket into place. So I'll cover that in a moment. And then this one, again, same as the first one, I've just whipped the cord and gone through the centre of my crease there. All I did was um, I got a wide um, hold needle, or one with a, a wide hole to it, and then I just threaded through my cords so that it came out through the bottom of my pocket and then I started whipping my cord. Now for this one um, I didn't use DMC thread I just used some crochet cotton that I had in my stash this was some ecru that I'd been using um, to make some little crochet flowers for the folios that I made a while ago and I just used there we go I just used three strands of the crochet cotton and then one strand to whip it. Now let me just show you how I do that. Um, there are various methods for whipping cord and you can even do it on your sewing machine but for the life of me I couldn't remember how to do that yesterday. I know when I did my City of Guilds um, embroidery years and years ago that they showed me how to whip a cord on a sewing machine but I just couldn't remember um, and besides I wanted to sit and watch some television last night and this is really whilst it's long-winded to do it's quite therapeutic um, to do so as I said all I did was um, and I'm going to show you on the crochet cotton and I'm going to use my DMC threads as well so that you can see as I'm doing it hopefully pick up what I'm doing so all I did was I got hold of three um, lengths of the DM, sorry, the um, crochet cotton. I measured it out to roughly round about 16 inches. Now the length is completely your preference, but I quite like um, a long wrapper around on my um, uh, my needle cases. Um, I threaded it. Th I, I threaded it through um, the crease of my pocket so I went from the inside through to the outside and then I knotted the end inside and that's all I'm going to do if you do a big enough knot it'll hold and it'll stay secure and it won't interfere with anything you put in that pocket oh you'll also see that I've actually got a line of stitching on the inside of this one and that's because I wanted to make sure that this I was sailing very close to the wind or close to the edge when I was actually stitching this in place so I didn't want it to fray um, so I just put an extra line of stitching in and that was after I put my my cover in place okay so let's get on to how I do my whipping let's pop this to one side so you have your threads coming out through the end of your case or through the seam of um, the crease of your case and at that stage it will just look like this. So I'm going to replicate that with some crochet cotton here that I've got and I've just knotted the end so you will have to just imagine that that knot is on the inside of that crease and what I do then is you just need to secure your needle case somewhere where you can have um, quite a tension on your threads. Now, 
Um, once you've done that, all I tend to do is just keep that tension by wrapping it round my little finger and then I just hold it across my palm like so. Now, if you have one of these, this is a tatting um, uh, bobbin. Brilliant. Use one of these. Wind on your cotton to the centre portion or your crochet cotton or your DMC thread to the centre portion. If you don't have one of these, then equally you can just use your um, bobbin from your sewing machine or your spool from your sewing machine. Wind on some thread from, from that and um, that will do uh, the, same, the same purpose really. So I'm just going to bring the camera down a little bit more so that you can see hopefully what I'm doing here. So the first stitch is slightly tricky, just slightly. Just lay the end of the thread from your bobbin or from your tatting spool and then go over your uh, crochet threads and through the loop that you've created so it looks like that. Okay, so I'm just going to do that again for you. So here's your thread alongside. Go over the top behind and bring it through like so. So you've made a little loop like that. Then all you do is you do exactly the same again with your bobbin and pull your thread tight. Okay, so once you've mastered that, that is literally all you are going to be doing. So you go, let me get some more thread out. So you go over the top, underneath, and through the loop that you've created. And just pull it tight so that it's like that. And it will just slide up to the other stitch. So here we go again. Over the top, underneath, through the loop, pull it and just slide it along. Over the top, underneath, through the loop and slide it along. Over the top, underneath, through the loop that you've created and slide it along. Now, if you do it slow enough and stead steadily enough and keep your tension nice and tight, you will end up with a tiny, tiny little ridge along one side. But if you're watching telly like I was last night, <laughs> and you can, I mean, as I say, it's really therapeutic, this. You don't even have to think about what you're, you're doing. You can just easily, she says, do it without giving it a thought. Watch what you're doing. Um, chat away, um, you will end up with that little ridge bouncing around all over the place. And that's what gives gives it its kind of rough edge um, or it's ki kind of like a, an or organic edge, which I quite like. And then you will find eventually that you will get to the end of this little piece which is the piece that started you off. Now don't worry about that. Um, you can chop it off before you get to the end or you can chop it off as you go along and it won't make any difference so long as you have done a few stitches to start um, to go over the top of it. Okay. So if I just carry on now, over the top, behind and under, You won't even know that that thread has been chopped chopped off. Okay, now I'm just going to show you how I started off again. If you find um, that your stitches are um, not tight enough to the underside of your pocket here, just you will find that you can move them up and down on. The main thread. So don't worry about that, you can just push it up so that it's up tight against the crease of your pocket. Okay. Now what you could do, you could do what I've done here and cut yourself a length of 
um, thread and whip it and then thread it through um, the crease of your pocket but um, the reason I didn't do that originally was because when you've actually made these they are thicker obviously than your original threads and they are slightly stiffer so they are going to make um, a bigger hole as you push it through your felt and your fabric so I think you will find it will go through easier if you do it first and then secure your needle case somewhere as you as you start to do this whipping process so let me just show you once again how you get started I'm just going to move these stitches up and out the way and quickly show you how you get started so this is your your um, cord that you want to whip just create a tension and as I say I just wrap it around my little fingers like that a couple of times and just hold it and secure it in place which makes it a lot easier catch hold of the thread that you're going to use for whipping and this as I said was two threads of DMC thread and just hold those tightly just till you get started and then over the top of your um, cords, underneath and through the loop that you've created and just pull it and then over the top, underneath and through the loop, whoops a daisy, through the loop and it all looks a bit loose at this stage, don't worry just pull this whipping cord and it will tighten up to make that first stitch for you and then you're away after that over the top underneath through the loop and pull so it really couldn't be any easier it really is as simple as that um, and I'm just going to pull that off and then we're back to square one okay so you can finish off your um, needle cases now so all you need to do once you've um, done your cord and stitched on your button what you need to do now is just fold your pocket into place like so pin it tack it whatever you want to do and then just stitch round once more um, with your sewing machine or you don't have to go all the way round here sorry I'll get that back in frame for you you don't have to go all the way around these three sides what you can do is you can just stitch across the top there and across the bottom of your pocket so you've got two options top and bottom just to secure your pocket or all the way around on those three sides whichever you prefer for your look now to secure the end of your tassel here you can leave it knotted like I've done on this one and leave it just like that or you can make a little tassel like so in fact I quite like this look I think I'm I really think that that's worked out quite well I'm really pleased with that little tassel or you can do what I did originally on this one and put two handmade beads and all I did was I put a couple of knots in between just to keep them separate so what I'm thinking about doing on this one is I have a handmade paper bead here that I made a while ago and I'm going to secure that on the end of my tassel I think on the on this one as I quite like that look um, it might be a little bit too big um, because obviously my cord is a lot thinner so if I can't think of a way of securing that on there then what I thought I might do is actually take a bead off this piece of old jewellery that I found in a thrift shop um, a good few months ago and I might use one of these there is kind of that milky um, mauve one that would go quite nicely with that or perhaps there was another one uh, this little glass bead here that's got kind of 
a purpley hue to it. Sorry, a purpley hue to it. So I could use that one. So the jury's out on what I'm going to do on this little one. It'll either be one of those three beads. Um, for these, I've got one or two things. Certainly for the tassel one, I'm going to leave that as it is. But for these two, I thought that I might put on one of these little glass beads or a couple of these on the end just to uh, add a bit more interest. So that's all I'm going to cover today. And tomorrow I will be doing a very, very um, quick show and tell um, of the finished needle cases. So thanks very much for watching everybody. Take care and I hope you're having fun making your own needle cases. Bye bye for now.